first solo show um, at the gathering. Claire joined the gathering in January this year, and we've worked together on a few group shows before this one. And I'd like to say to Claire how grateful I am to her for putting the show together. It's been absolutely brilliant to work with you on this one. I just love all the research that you've carried out that has led to this new body of work. I'm actually blown over by your work. And, and I love the way that you've engaged uh, with the space. So. It gives me great pleasure to welcome our guest speaker today. I'm sure that for most of you, Brian Fay needs no introduction. One of Ireland's most esteemed artists, um, Brian Fay's practice is rooted, rooted in drawing, and he uses the materiality of pre-existing artworks and objects to examine that complex relationship to time. Represented by my esteemed colleague at the NAG, Mark St. John Dennis, Brian's work is in the National Drawing Collection Ireland and collections of the Crawford Art Gallery in Cork, the Dublin Institute of Technology, the Office of Public Works Irish State Collection, and many private collections. Brian holds a practice-led PhD from Northbury University, England, and is head of fine art in DIT, where he has been lecturing for a few years. His drawing, and this is a long title, from a, from a speculative reconstruction of underlying figure macro X-ray X -ray Rembrandt old man in military costume, that's the title, this work, this drawing was awarded the AXA Drawing Prize at this year's uh, Royal Art Berlin um, Academy Annual Exhibition. Another drawing, with a shorter title, uh, a Vermeer woman in blue reading a letter, 1662-65, was shortlisted, I think you've all heard about this, was shortlisted for the Irish Times and Royal Irish Academy Modern Ireland in 100 artworks for 2015. Brian was also the winner of the 2014 Durant International Drawing Prize. I would like to thank you, Brian, for your precious time. I know that you're extremely busy at the moment preparing for a solo exhibition and also working on, on the creation of something as a line a group show which opens at the High Lanes um, Gallery at the end of this month. Um, a group show with a fantastic um, um, group of artists, among whom Maud Carter, Neve of Money, and Kathy Prendia. So thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Brian Fay. Um, thank you, uh, Olivier, and thank you, Claire. Um, I wasn't nervous about talking until I just heard that introduction. <laughs> I, was, I, I don't know how to follow it, it's all going to go downhill from here on my behalf, and certainly not on behalf of Claire Halkins. Um, just to be brief, don't worry, I have loads of sheets of paper here, but it's not, it's not full script. Um, the use of the CIA's Glomar response is a most apt statement for the work of Claire Halpin. Um, for those who are unfamiliar, the, the quote that Claire uses the Glomar response is, we can either confirm or deny the existence or the non-existence of the information we request. And if such hypothetical information did exist, such information would be classified. Now, I am I'm really happy to be asked to open Claire Halpin's exhibition, The Glomar Response. Um, I'm long aware of the calibre and range of Claire's art practices and her activities as an educator across a number of national institutions and as a curator. She's hugely uh, vibrant on the international scene, putting a lot of Irish artists in group exhibitions and group projects as well too. And I have to say I'm the victim of one of those as well too, and it's been a wonderful <laughs> experience. Um, and of course, with my work hat on, most importantly, I would like her because she's a graduate of fine art at DIT as well too. Um, but this range of artistic, social, historical and political interests and activities are all present and encompassed here in this really, really wonderful exhibition. And it's a three-part exhibition as well, too. Claire has uh, composed and compiled a series of paintings, small video piece, two drawings. Have you seen the drawings? <laughs> two drawings. Come back to that later, and a video piece downstairs that's taken from CIA documentation as well too, and I'd urge you, it's worth the trip downstairs, just below, um, to have a look at as well too. While the CIA can be cagey about readings that it wants to send out, with Claire's work, each of us can come to our own readings for this show, and for me, I'm enthralled by the scope 
and the presence of the paintings and the videos and the drawings. The works here are wholly present, but deal with things, places, people, ideologies that can be or presented to us as hidden. And this idea of stories being hidden seems to be really embedded in what Claire is about. The stories we, we tell ourselves, the stories we tell to each other, but the stories that we are also told. Um, from whistleblowers, from the, the, the different locations of Julian Assange and um, Manning and Snowden, um, to the American burial of Soviet uh, submariners in a small piece there, to non uh, man made national, uh, excuse me, man made islands of no fixed positioning, and the aftermath of iconoclastic acts within them. All these come from stories, all these come from um, art history as well. And what I find fascinating about Claire is that she's bringing in current, uh, vibrant, edgy, slightly dangerous stories that are of now, but she embeds them in painting and she embeds them in drawing and she embeds them in documentation. But all the time she has a register for art history. There's a knowingness about how Claire positions things and how Claire composes things and how she tells her, her stories. That idea of things being hidden is really echoed in the way in which Claire paints. In the, in the suite of paintings around, each one is a glaze. Each one is overworked. Each one shows us some, but erases the pieces that are underneath, creating these really delicate, finely rendered palimpsests of information. And particularly in, the, in these ones here, we can also see the areas where Claire has sanded back. So we get an evidence of the history of the construction of the painting itself it begins to tell us more stories as well too. And Claire really brings that all through, that knowledge of, of key artists from uh, different moments in art history, from Bort, Bruegel, Bosch, Goya, uh, but most importantly, rather than just things being viewed with a backward glance, it's about taking news footage now. It's about stories that matters to us now. And the artfulness that Claire brings to this is what we all get to experience in this show. So in conclusion, and to counteract the CIA's Glomar response, I am happy to confirm that Claire Halfman's <laughs> exhibition is not hypothetical. It does indeed exist, can be classified as exceptionally strong, and is now officially open. <laughs>
one of us here, myself and my three collaborators here, just to go in small groups, it's sort of kind of smallish downstairs, but it's really, as Brian said, it's really perfect. Right? So, uh, so yeah. Do try to find those drawings, Brian. Yeah. 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 Yeah.